All right. Welcome to part three of Animal Farm for the B30 course. This is meeting number 13. And so we're on chapter six. And on page 40, we talk about the work week. Now, the average work week in our society is 40. Uh, Part-time work is around 20. So if uh, full-time work is 40, part-time is 20, these animals are working 60 hours, okay? Uh, and uh, there are some careers that uh, would probably, uh, or even uh, some, if you, especially if two jobs, you might work 60 hour a week. So this is not a massive stretch, but if, if it's just your one job, regular job, uh, it can be very extensive and very, very challenging. Uh, especially when the uh, management, uh, they're not doing as much of the work during that 60 hour week. Um, it's just the other animals that are there working hard on the land. Uh, we have um, Clover warning Boxer on page 41, not to overdo it. And we already had a warning of that uh, from Old Major in chapter one. Uh, so, uh, Will Boxer heed those warnings? Probably not. Uh, very little has changed since Jones's time. It's different players, rebranding. Uh, we've had Jones now gone. We have a rebrand or renaming of the leaders. It's now Snowball Napoleon. Oh, but correction, now it's Napoleon. So snap, stamp Jones, stamp Snowball Napoleon, stamp Napoleon. And rebrand, rebrand, rebrand. And of course, the methods have not changed. So, and the, 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 the living conditions have not changed, but it's their farm. It's their farm. Don't forget that, okay? Uh, we have uh, trade with humans required. And of course that is not, the animals don't wanna do that. Especially with the fact that they just finished having a, a battle with them. So, uh, the uh, Napoleon uh, develops a trade pact with the humans. Uh, so it's very similar to the Nazi Soviet non-aggression pact. I talked about that in great detail. And the animals are forgetting the, uh, what rights they had prior to Napoleon taking over. So if you're not taught this on a regular basis, you're not uh, uh, understanding history, telling, uh, the stories, the legends, uh, the, you know, what happened in the past uh, uh, led to this. And uh, from that event, it led to this event, uh, this outcome, and so on and so forth. So you see the, 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 um, the path that one event led, uh, to, took in order to get to this point. So if you don't understand or if you don't learn what those points were, uh, everything that's happened in the past could be easily rewritten or discarded. And now you just have this, this initial point uh, of what's happening now. And then that becomes the foundation for the future events that, that will occur based on that event. Because nobody's questioning and nobody's uh, saying, well, wait a second, didn't we have something similar to this before? Uh, so, and when you say, yes, we did, Oh, you find out that this, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. Oh, wait a second. There's some similarities to what had happened in the past to what's happening now. And this was the outcome. History repeats itself. Okay. So any of the, any time that uh, there's talk about the, about the past, it's downplayed by Squealer. Um, that those are just stories. Uh, there, that's those things, uh, or they did happen, but not in the fa in the way that you that you thought it happened. So that places doubt in their minds, and of course they'll defer to who's in charge because they know better. Um. So Jones is now officially out of the picture, uh, but he can be, still be used as a as a um, or brought back for. You know, as a reminder uh, to keep people in order, but now they have Snowball. Uh, now that he's been exiled, uh, they, they can use Snowball. Snowball's gonna come back if we, if we don't uh, keep ourselves on track. 
Uh, we have the First Amendment to the commandments, because um, once the animals find out that the pigs are living in the house, remember it was supposed to be maintained as a museum, we find out that the Fourth Commandment is no animal shall sleep in a bed. But it's been amended and now they've added with sheets. Okay, so uh, just that subtle change changes the whole meaning of that commandment. Um, keeps the original one intact, but it changes the meaning of, of what's going on here. Um, and that's what amendments do, changes the, the meaning of, of the original um, initiative that took place. Um, logic is used to defend the uh, amendment. Uh, and once they, and now whose logic is that? That's the pig's logic. And uh, of course, uh, if the pigs don't get their rest, uh, they can't keep snowball away, right? Just like the, uh, the milk, and, uh, milk and cookies, milk and uh, apples. If we don't have our brains working, Jones is gonna come back. Does that sound familiar? And uh, then we have a storm that uh, occurs. They've been building this windmill that snowball came up with first, but. Uh, uh, of course, Napoleon makes it sound like it was his idea right from the start, uh, even though he dis uh, tried to, to discredit the whole idea. And the storm comes up and destroys it. But the animals don't know that. So how are they? Uh, how do you explain to these animals uh, what happened to the windmill? Oh, snowball came in the night and destroyed it. Okay, it's snowball. Page forty-seven. Okay. So, snowball is scapegoat for any any issue that, or anything that goes wrong on the farm, and they did, uh, Napoleon declares that they are going to rebuild the windmill. Okay, so it keeps the animals busy, distracted, and avoids any time to question anything because now they got to get back to work. In chapter seven, uh, they have a harsh winter. Uh, squealers, of course. Uh, continuing to keep everybody in line. Boxer still using his maxim, I will work harder. Uh, so propaganda versus perseverance is, is uh, the, the big issue in chapter seven on page 49. Um, we also have um, the uh, they, they, pigs realize they have to pay for their, their items uh, with the humans. Uh, and we have Whimper, he's a mediator. And uh, so the, Napoleon says, we're going to use the eggs instead from the hens. But the hens said, oh, oh no, no, you're not taking our eggs. Uh, so th that's the job action. And of course, job action leads to dissent. Napoleon's not going to have anything to do with dissent. So uh, we have uh, the uh, hens uh, being starved out and eventually um, they do give in and the eggs are used to purchase the necessary tools and supplies needed to keep the animal farm in this windmill, uh, the new windmill, uh, um, keep, the, keep them on progress or on, on track to, to building this new windmill. Uh, Snowball again is brought in. Uh, <laughs> Napoleon even says, I'll investigate. Oh, look at all these. There, there, there are some, there, there are these hooves. There, there are snowballs. Hooves. Well, there's how many pigs are on the farm? Okay. There's hundreds of pigs on this farm. And the animals can't figure that out. They, how, how can one pig figure out or state that this hoof uh, or these hooves belong to, to Snowball? Uh, <laughs> did they do a CSI thing here to figure this out? Okay. Um, so it. Uh, Creates that fear again. Oh, snowballs coming in the middle of the night to cause havoc and or create havoc. Um, so it's part of that propaganda uh, um, to brainwash the animals. And we have maxim number five: uh, death to death to uh, humanity. On page fifty-four, that's from Napoleon. And uh, so, um, but. The, the pigs are now rewriting history. So if you play that telephone game, for example, way back in the day, uh, you whisper uh, 
uh, a phrase into one person's ear, they, they're supposed to repeat the same phrase to the next person and so on and so forth. By the time you get to the end of the line, the, somebody screwed up or messed up the uh, line at some point and then you get a totally different um, message at the end. Um, so the, no matter how outrageous the story is, if it's uh, if there's some, there's some logic to it, uh, the animals are going to take it as face value because they're blind. They, uh, Napoleon's always right, right? Um, Boxer says, no way, this can't be happening. Uh, he did that three times, okay? And Squeeter, he was paying attention because pigs are meticulous when it comes to keeping track of uh, supplies, numbers, stuff like that. And uh, so they're not going to forget how uh, Boxer acted up in, in this, this chapter. Um, we have uh, executions that occur in this chapter for the dissenters, the ones that are going against animalism, against the pigs. Um, we've had some forced confessions. That sounds very familiar in history. Um, then Boxer uh, turns to the animals and said, we need to blame ourselves for this because this is our fault that this happened. Uh, so we need to work harder to avoid having this ever happen again. And uh, so the animals comply. And so Clover looks back and uh, basically uh, remembers, uh, was one of the few animals that remembers what it was like before all this, these, these coercions, these mass executions, uh, uh, the rationing of food and stuff like that. We, they actually did have quite a bit of, uh, uh, available to them when Jones was running the farm, even though he didn't care for the animals very well, but they still had quite a bit. And uh, so she wishes that uh, they can go back to that time. But unfortunately, the reality is they can't. You can't go back. Uh, you can move forward, but in order to move forward, you have to learn from the past and apply it to the present situation so that your future will be a lot better. Um, the Beast of England uh, anthem is abolished because that's a revolutionary song. And uh, so then we have Minimus who comes out and creates Animal Farm, Animal Farm, Never Through Me, Shalt Thou Come to Harm on page 60. Nice song that one too. So we're going to stop there and we'll get into part four. Take care, be safe. <laughs>